Hello folks, Lone Adventurer here. Thank you very much for stumbling your way upon my channel and joining me for another Marching Order adventure. This is a game that I have covered on the channel before and it is a game that I enjoy very much. If you saw my last playthrough, you will know that already. This is a copy that has kindly been provided to me by Crumbling Keep Games. And whilst this is the original edition of the game that you see before you primarily, although this one here, this book here is new, you can currently get yourself a copy of the new edition over on Kickstarter. There is a link to the Kickstarter page down in the description below. I am an affiliate of this Kickstarter, which is a new experience uh, for me. I've been asked a couple of times to be an affiliate on a Kickstarter, but Marching Order is the first one that I genuinely believe in enough to take up the cause and promote to you my long-suffering audience. But do bear in mind that I'm an affiliate when you hear my views in this video. So in this video, I am going to do a playthrough of this new book here, The Sewers of Rotbottom. This is something that is part of the new edition that is on Kickstarter at the moment. If you are familiar with Marching Order, you will know that, generally speaking, you are playing through predefined locations, such as the Decaying Manse, which comes uh, in this book here, which I'm sure will be part of the Kickstarter. And in here we've got the Den of the Goblin Lord, the Catacombs of Rotbottom, and the Crypt of Siegfried von Shadowhammer. So that's four predefined uh, little delves that you can have. There's a whole bunch of other ones available. Probably I will discuss them over the course of this video. But what the sewers of Rotbottom bring to marching order is something that fans of the system have uh, been asking for for quite some time, which is a generative location. So this is a location that is randomly generated. There's a whole bunch of stuff in this book that allow you to do that. So it's a location that you can go back to multiple times and have a different experience. So that's going to be in the Kickstarter. I think what I'm going to do now is give a very brief overview of what I understand the Kickstarter will provide. If you don't want to listen to me waffle on about this, you can use timestamps in the description below to either skip to me doing an overview of Sewers of Rockbottom or to me starting my playthrough of Sewers of Rockbottom. Or if you want, you can just go directly to the Kickstarter page and no doubt the information will be beautifully presented there and you won't need to listen to me waffle. However, in the Kickstarter edition, which looks really really lovely like the presentation of it the new box that you get the game in so I received the game in this rather cool box here and I was grateful I like this box I think it's fantastic however the box that the new edition comes in is stunning all the books like slide into it there's room for the cards because marching order is a game that uh, relies on cards so to a certain degree. Um, but the, the new edition also comes with figures. So this artwork here, which is, let me just make sure I get the artist's name right, Mustafa Bekir. Mustafa Bekir does the uh, artwork on the front covers and he does the artwork on the cards. And now these characters that he has designed and drawn will be included as standees because as you will see during this video you need to physically have uh, lines of enemies and characters in front of you as you play and rather than using the cards or I guess in addition to using the cards you will now be able to use standees so in the Kickstarter you get the standees you get uh, I would imagine some new cards along with the original cards you get a heavily updated version of the rulebook I believe it has been rewritten quite extensively 
but new stuff has also been added, including allies, which is a new mechanic, or at least a mechanic that is new to the core rulebook, uh, new equipment, additional rogues. Uh, some of the rogues that I haven't played with include the wizard, the barbarian, the were rat rogue, the cosmic marine, the musketeer, the construct, and the knight. I have added a new rogue to my lineup since my last playthrough, but we'll get to that in a bit. I believe there is a new starter campaign, so four new linked delves. I don't know if that's in addition to these ones or whether these ones are included as an add-on. I'm not really sure. The new campaign is called The Gallows and it includes this book here, The Sewers of Rotbottom, that provide you with uh, more replayability. And I think in the campaign you can also get these quick and dirty uh, location delves. These are quick playing single games um, that are all crazy and reflective of the uh, marching order tone which you will see as we are going through these books. This is a game that has a very uh, specific approach and humour that I find quite pleasing. It also includes some rogue sheets. Um, I ended up making my own little uh, sheets to keep nearby while I was playing um, because I found that that wasn't really something that uh, was provided. But I think now those have been essentially designed for you. The, the original game does come with character sheets, but I found them a bit too unwieldy. So I ended up making my own ones. There are now um, rogue sheets and you can get a pack of those with the campaign. There are some cool stretch goals, including the one that I'm most excited about, building uh, a barracks. So you can create your own location, a barracks, which is where your rogues which is what we call characters in marching order, stay between delves and then you can sort of kit it out and spend money on your barracks. And that's one of the more interesting looking stretch goals. OK, enough about the Kickstarter. I'm going to do a little overview of the system. This is something you might want to skip if you are already familiar with marching order. Here we go. So I have got my rogues lined up. When you go into a location, you take in a total of four uh, rogues and you hope that they uh, do not die. Each rogue has health. They have luck. They have a bunch of other stats around the side here. Um, I, I'm not sure I'm going to remember what they all are. Let me let me get that open in the book. Yep, so we have got uh, physical, which is used for attacks, defense, which is used for defense, obviously, uh, magic, if you're using magic, tink, tinker, which is for traps and whatnot. Then we've got aware, escape, luck, and resolve. So quite a few stats. You have your uh, rogues, and you take them into a location at its heart marching order is a very straightforward game. It's a little bit like a game book really. You it's you have a a story that you're reading, you have a little bit of introductory text, and then you go to a location. So here we're going to go to uh, H, entry H, almost like turn to entry 34 in a fighting fantasy book. And then you uh, find out about that location, a bit of descriptive text. There might be some enemies for you to fight. And then you choose your onward journey um, into uh, whichever area you want to go next. And you continue to explore that location until you complete the objective that you were given in terms of uh, why you went in there in the first place. If you find some enemies, like here we've just got four giant rats. What you do is you find your giant rats. There they are. And you line them up. And essentially you then have two lines of uh, combatants that are facing up against each other. 
and this is where they actually meet. So the archer Lucinda here is directly next to this giant rat. And then these ones are further away and these characters are further away. So when you are creating your marching order, you have to make sure, and actually I've just realized that I have put mine, my marching order exactly opposite my intended order. I've got my archer at the front and as you would imagine, you want your archer at the back. So actually, that's Lucinda, this is Rocco, and that is Creeper. And the reason why that matters is because Lucinda, my cell sword, has an attack that is able to target adjacent creatures. And then my archer, Danny, she has an attack that can target creatures from further away. And that's something you need to consider in marching order. And that is really more or less it. Obviously there is details about how combat goes and various other details and nuances of the game, but really that is the basics. Now if you want to see me play a normal game of marching order from scratch, you can check out my first playthrough. There'll be a link up in the corner of the screen right about now and in the description down below. But if you want to see a playthrough of uh, the sewers of rock bottom then stick around for this one or watch both if you want i'm not going to stop you i think what we're going to do now is have a very quick look at the sewers of rock bottom it's not going to take too long because as with all of marching order this isn't the most uh, complex supplement in the world you uh, will be able to pick it up have a little read and be playing it really quite quickly but let's have a little look at it. I'm not gonna read through the introductory text here. Essentially, Headmeister Dunberger Gieterheim, who is the, um, I guess he's like the, the mayor or the boss of Rock Bottom, the town. He has questionable morals and isn't the most pleasant guy in the world, but he has identified an issue with rats down in the sewers of Rock Bottom and you have to go in and deal with it. As a result, you get some money whenever you kill a rat. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that is the case. I remember reading it, but I now can't see the bit where it says that. No matter, I'll find it in a little bit. Um, yeah, and basically you're just rolling on some tables. You're rolling on some tables, you're generating the location as you go. There is an aspect of it getting increasingly more dangerous the longer you stay. There is an escalation die, which you uh, increase by one whenever you're told to do so, and you're adding that on to certain die rolls, and that's gonna make it more and more dangerous. But these two pages that I'm flicking back between now, those are the extent of the new rules. And then you're straight into uh, some room tables. So this is the sort of thing you'll be familiar with if you play Four Against Darkness. It's essentially the same thing. You've got a D66 table of options there. Now looking through this, I found myself thinking that maybe there's an awful lot of doors and you might end up with many, many doors, but I guess that's not really a problem. And then you've got a room contents table. And you roll a one and the room is empty. Two to three, you roll on the monsters table. Four, a general loot. Five, traps. Six, special. And then the rest of the book is just made up of cool stuff. Some new art from Mustafa. I guess it's new, I'm not 100% sure. Look at that guy, he's nice. Yeah, all um, sort of presented in the sort of way that we expect from Marching Order and lots of surprises. Now I have not even looked at any of that stuff. I wanted to experience it for the first time as I played the game through in this video. And uh, that's what we're gonna do really. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper on which I can draw my sewers map. Uh, we are going to take our party of rogues into the sewers and we're just going to see how we get on really have a little delve 
Hopefully no one will die. If you watched my original playthrough of the first delve from the main Marching Order book, and you happen to have a memory far better than mine, you might spot the Alchemist is a new character. Since playing through the game in the previous video, I have played this Marching Order Quick and Dirty Adventure, Return to the Decaying Mance. I think these are all gonna be available as add-ons in the Kickstarter. I made a little bit of cash, and I was able to hire a new rogue who is an alchemist called Creeper. We'll go over their actions and abilities and whatnot when we come to their round at some point. Everyone else is pretty much the same. I've got some new equipment for people. Obviously, because I've switched in Creeper, the alchemist, I've had to pop Jeff, our torchbearer, to one side for the time being. I think you hold on, you can sort of switch in rogues, you have like a team of rogues, and you can switch them in and out as you see fit. I can't really see Jeff coming back. I suppose I would bring Jeff back if someone died and I had a gap. Um, but yeah, we've got Lucinda, not much has changed. Oh, wait a minute, no, Lucinda, something has changed because I trained her up a little bit and gave her the Dirty Trick debuff action, which allows her to target one enemy up to two spaces away and they receive a condition called Defenseless, minus two. And I'm assuming that reduces their defense in fact, I'm pretty certain that's what that will do. I haven't checked yet, but that seems to make sense. Um, we've got some new equipment. Lucinda's got a rope and grapple now. Bought a couple of extra torches here and there. The odd new bandage. Uh, Danny, I've given some Tinker's tools to. And then Creeper, I bought some starting equipment. An alchemist's fire, which is like a cool-looking one-time weapon that I haven't bought before, but I figured since Creeper was an alchemist, it would be a good time to try that out. Uh, yeah, that is that. All right, I'm going to pause the video. I am going to set myself up a little bit so that I am ready to uh, go into the sewers of Rock Bottom, ready to get neck deep in the sewers of Rock Bottom. Okay, it's five coins per rat that you kill. I found that in the introductory text, the little conversation you're having with Headmeister Dunberger Gieterheim. He tells you he'll give you five coins per rat. Now, what we've got to do is draw some steps down into the dungeon, and then we're straight in. No messing around. We're gonna roll on our D66 table, I'm going to use a blue dice for my 10s, a red dice for my 1s, 16. And there we go, this is our first room, this corridor here. Alright, I'm going to have a go at drawing that, that's actually quite a nice one. How am I going to do this? Do you know what I'm going to do? Because I think it's going to look pleasing, I'm going to add an entrance here. And this is our steps are going to come down here into this, that's what I'm going to do. So there we go. I will also, at some point, pause the video and do some hatching just to make it look nicer, stuff like that. But there you go, that is our first room. And once we have drawn that, we need to roll on the room contents table. Be kind of nice if there was a copy of that in the front or the back of the book. Um, yeah, that's a roll of d6. So let's do that. Find out what's in this room. Two. Roll on the monsters table. So we're straight into some fighting. Fantastic. Okay, some of the uh, page numbers are incorrect. Uh, this is not the final version, of course. This is a prototype of sorts. So don't worry too much about that. But here is our monsters table. It is how many entries 18 18 so what do we roll uh roll 1d6 it says here and then you add on the value of the escalation dice that makes sense because our escalation dice that i've popped over here is set to initial value of one 
And so the minimum you can have is two because it'll be a roll of one plus the escalation dice. Two, so that is a total of three, which gives us a giant rat, a giant rat, a diseased rat, and a diseased rat. So four enemies, I will get those set up and bring you back. All right, here we are all set up and ready for a round of combat. We've got our four enemies here. We've got our party here, obviously. I've got my little character sheets that I have made and we'll need the main marching order book so that we can refer to the enemies uh, roll tables in the back. Let me just find those. There we go, we've got the giant rat and the diseased rat. So I'll just pop my finger in there. And at the start of combat, you need to decide who is going to go first. In the rule book, it suggests you roll a dice for each and see who is highest. I don't do that, I roll a single dice. On a one, two or a three, the enemy goes first. On a four, five or a six, the characters go first, your party. Three, that means the enemy are going to go first. And if you haven't watched a marching order video before, you will see how straightforward the combat is compared to some other games. It is delightfully easy and quick, but there's enough like weirdness and character to it that you have a distinctive and unique experience. Here we go. So we're going to start with the enemy closest to us and work our way back. So let's start with the giant rat here. Each of these enemies that we're looking at right now has two actions and we roll a dice to see which one they do. One, two, three, the first action, four, five, six, the second action. So that's a five, which means that this rat is going to skitter scatter, which means it swaps places with one of its brethren. So I'm gonna roll a dice. One, two, or swap with that one. Three, four, that one. Five, six, that one. Six, so the giant rat is going to skitter scatter to the back. These dice, by the way, represent the health that the each enemy has. That's that one. Then we're going to move on. Well, no, now we've got to do this rat, the diseased rat that's at the front. That was pretty bad, actually, because we don't really want the diseased rat next to our cell sword. So that skitter scatter action was somewhat irritating. We're then going to find out what this diseased rat is going to do, since they have now found themselves at the front of their marching order. Whoop three that's a toothy boy action that's good because the other one can poison your um, rogue toothy boys targets an adjacent rogue make a physical attack roll versus defense because the rat is next to a rogue it will attack we're just going to roll a dice add on their physical which is zero and then subtract the defense of our cell sword Let's see what we get three add zero is three minus four takes us back down to zero so no damage has been done to our cell sword when a uh, combatant has done their action to flip them over so that you can see which ones have been already and i sometimes forget to do that but the reason that is beneficial is especially with these rats they can switch around and you're not doing them in an exact order so this Giant rat is going to go next. Three, uh, it's the same action, toothy boys. Targets an adjacent rogue. Make a physical attack roll. If no rogue's adjacent, the giant rat switches place with the ally in front of it. So then that one's going to come forward. But then that is the action for that rat. Then the next one. Six, putrid bite. Luckily, not next to a rogue. So just gonna move up in the marching order. Actually, that doesn't really matter because both of those rats are identical right now, but all the rats are done. We're then gonna do the bullshit roll. And the bullshit roll is one of the things that makes marching order marching order. We're gonna roll a dice. If we roll a one, something bad for that enemy 
or that character, because your characters do bullshit rolls as well, will happen. And if you roll a six, something positive for that enemy or that character will happen. So we're going to start with this giant rat. I'm going to do four rolls, one for each. Oh, something bad's happened for the first giant rat. I know what that's going to be. Wait, it was that easy? The giant rat dies. So that, that character just dies. And uh, this is one of the benefits of rats. They're quite easy to kill. And because we're in the sewers, we get uh, five coins. So I need to make a note of that. But then the uh, marching order is all going to move forward. Probably not necessary to do that, but I like to keep everything sort of close up and personal. All right, next rat, nothing. Remember, just looking for ones and sixes. Next rat, nothing. Next rat, nothing. Okay. So that's the rats done, and we're going to move on to our characters. Starting with the character that is closest to the enemies, which is Lucinda. Lucinda is going to do a... Um, we're not going to be using any fancy actions against these rats, I don't think, because they are not particularly dangerous. So it's just going to be a hack and slash attack, which is the basic attack. Target creature up to two spaces away. Physical attack versus defense. We're just going to attack the rat directly next to us. Here we go. One, that is awful. One plus one. And the defense of the dis diseased rat is two. So subtracting that gives us zero, which is a bit of a shame. Then our doctor... Basic staff attack, target creature one to two spaces away. So one to two spaces means the furthest that he can reach is this diseased rat. So that's who he's going to attack. Four, that's better. But the uh, doctor's physical is minus one, so that takes it down to three. Defense of two means we're left with one. So doing one point of damage to that rat. Then our alchemist, our new character has got a physical of zero. The basic attack is called acid in your eye. Target two middle or adjacent if not applicable. Physical attack versus defense. Roll one time for both. Because I haven't got two middle rats, I can choose to either attack these two or these two. I'm going to attack the front two, which is our two diseased rats. One roll Standard physical roll, and it will do damage to both of them. I guess it's like I'm throwing acid at them, which is nice. Six, that's good news. Six plus zero, minus two is four. That's going to immediately take out both of those rats. And we're left with one giant rat. And hopefully Lucinda can... Not Lucinda, sorry, Danny. Hopefully Danny, my archer, can finish it off. So Danny's standard attack is an uh, arrow attack. Target a creature five to six spaces away. One, two, three, four. Oh no, the giant rat is too close. Can't do that. I'm not willing to use my rain of arrows attack because when you use the more powerful attacks, they have to cool down and you can't use them for a certain number of rounds. So that would be a waste. So and, uh, I think Danny is just going to sacrifice her go. Let's do the bullshit rolls first for Lucinda, then for the Doctor, then for the Alchemist, then for Danny our Archer, and nothing happens in any of those. Okay, we're going to reset everyone, and then we are back to the beginning, and our giant rat will have one chance to hit us before we finish it off. Here we go, we're going to roll a dice to see what it does. Three is Toofy Boys, so it's going to do a physical attack against Lucinda. One, that is a fail, that's not going to get past Lucinda's defence of four. Bullshit roll for the rat, nothing happening there. And then Lucinda is going to do her physical attack, her hack and slash attack. 3 plus 1 is 4. Defense of 1 means we're doing a total of 3 damage, which takes out the giant rat. Fantastic. Alright, that's the end of those enemies. 
So, four rats, that earns us 20 coins. That's pretty awesome. I've currently got 148 coins. I'm going to increase that to 168. All right, so that is, I believe, room one done. I don't think we were given any instruction to increase the uh, die here. What was it called? The escalation die. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, advance the escalation die by one after rolling. Ah, so every time you face an enemy, you increase the escalation die. So next time, we are likely to face a slightly more dangerous enemy. I forgot to mention that because we're in the sewers, every single room that we go into, we need to use a torch. So I did make sure I had a couple of spare torches. Have I brought enough spare torches? I don't really know. We're not going to go too far in. So this first room, then uh, our doctor, he's going to light a torch and we'll be using the first bit of it. And with that done, I think we just need to roll for another room. So we'll say that we're going to go up here, roll our two dice, get 42. 42 is this little shonky room here. So I'll draw that in. All right, so let's roll to see what is in this room. One, the room is empty. Okay, let's crack on then into another one. 35, it's a little dead end. It's a little tiny circular dead end. What are we going to find in this teeny weeny little room? Two, it's another monster. All right, let's have another monster, shall we? So we're going to roll on the monster table. We're adding on two this time. Oh, that was big. That was a five, six, seven. So we are going in with a far more intense group of enemies this time. Nowhere near the top end, but uh, seven gets us a giant rat, a were rat poker, a were rat dagger thrower, and another were rat, were rat dagger thrower. So that does sound like a more formidable group. Don't really know how they're all managing to fit into this tiny room, but there we go. We're going to have a cozy little fight in here. All right, let's see who's going to go first. One, two, or three. It is the enemy. Three, the enemy are going first again. So we're gonna start with the giant rat. So what is the giant rat gonna do? Six, skitter scatter. The giant rat switches place of a random ally. That's gonna be with the were rat dagger thrower. So they're gonna swap places. And then he is done. Then the were rat dagger thrower, having moved to the front, is going to go next. Three. That's going to give us the action thwack between the eyes. Target a rogue three spaces away. If there are no rogue three spaces away, target a rogue at the back. Make a physical attack versus their defense. One, two, three. So that is going to be uh, Creeper, the alchemist. Oh, that's rough. Six, seven, defense of two. That's five points of damage. That's awful. That is awful. What is the alchemist's health? I have not written that down. Just going to have to reference that in the rule book here. The alchemist starts with eight health. What about luck? Two. Two luck, eight health. I haven't been very lucky today, but I will write in the 8 health there, 2 luck there. What have I done with my pencil? There it is. It's black on the black table. Down to 3 health. That is quite alarming, really. So he has done his stuff. Then we're on to the were rat poker. Let's see what they get up to. 1. Pig sticker. 
target the closest rogue up to two spaces away, make a physical attack roll versus their defense. I'm going to attack Lucinda. Two, that's a bit better, plus one, three. Defense of four, so no damage done. And then the next one, five. Poison Bite, target an adjacent rogue. Well, there isn't one. If no rogue adjacent, move up one space in the marching order. Oh, wait a minute, was that the... Oh, that was the wrong table. Should have rolled on the Dagger Thrower Rat. So I think I'm going to have to wreck on that and re-roll. One. Thwack between the eyes, target a rogue three spaces away. Or the one at the back. One, two, three. So att attacking Lucinda. Four. Five, Lucinda has a defense of four, so taking one point of damage. Oh dear, this is a this is a rough start. Down to nine, and then we need to roll for bullshit, starting with the creature at the front. Oh, that's awful news. That's going to be something bad. A roll of six means the positive thing happens for the dagger thrower. Dagger storm. Target every rogue. The Wear Rat Dagger Thrower makes a plus zero attack versus each target's defense. Okay, so that was a two. The Cell Sword is a defense of four, so that's okay. Five versus a defense of th two on the Doctor, so the Doctor's taking three points of damage. <laughs> oh no! And then the Alchemist is taking two. Oh my god, and the Archer is taking two. This is ridiculous. The uh, sewers is quite a rough place. So the Doctor's going down to nine health. The Alchemist is shockingly going down to one. And then the um, Archer is going down to eight. Brutal. And that was just the first one. Nothing. 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 Thank goodness for that. Right, so they have all acted onto the cell sword. We need to bust out some stuff here, really. So the cell sword is going to use the always keep a knife in your boot action. Now this has a cooldown of two, which means we won't be able to do this for another two rounds. All it allows us to do is target an adjacent enemy and then we can do the hack and slash action. So we basically get two attacks. So first of all, going to attack the Wear Rat Dagger Thrower at the front. Five, plus one is six. Defense of one, so we're doing five points of damage. That takes it out. That's good news. Still got a bit of a way to go, though. Then going to do another attack, just a standard hack and slash. Going to go for the dagger thrower, I think, because we've got a better chance of taking it out. Oh, one. Plus one is two. Defense of one going down to three. That's a bit of a shame. Now, the doctor could use the patch that up action to do a bit of healing. I mean, I'm obviously a bit nervous about Lucinda being on one point of health because I spent quite a lot of coin not Lucinda, sorry, Creeper, because I spent quite a lot of coin on hiring them. Oh, but I want to get these rats down, really. One, two. Now, the Doctor can only target the front rat. We're not going to be able to take that rat out. So we are going to do this. We're going to um, use the patch, let me patch that up action, which has got a cooldown of three. Going to target Lucinda. Three... So regain half of that, uh, which is 1.5, rounded up to 2. So Lucinda's going to regain 2 health. Not Lucinda, I keep saying Lucinda, that's Creeper. So down, up from 1, back up to 3. I think that's probably worth it. Then Creeper is going to... Uh, their, their basic attack is pretty good. Target 2. So I'm going to target those 2. Here we go. Two, that is rubbish, plus zero, and they've both got a defense of one, so they're only taking one point of damage each. Then our archer is going to go, Danny at the back, five to six spaces away, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can target either of those, I think is going to go for the wear rat dagger thrower. 
standard physical attack, 6, plus physical, 7, uh, defense of 1, so doing uh, 6 points of damage, obviously enough to take the rat out. Okay, then we're going to do the bullshit rolls, starting with our cell sword. Nope. Oh, the doctor. Bad news for the doctor. What's going to happen to the doctor? No more blood. No more. Roll d6. Oh, on a 1 to 2, the doctor leaves the battle. Oh, and suffers 2 health. So the doctor is out of the battle and is suffering 2 damage. Every now and again, this game can be brutal. Okay, Creeper's bullshit roll. No. Oh, but the archer, Danny, some good news there by the looks of things. That was a great shot. Next action targets one extra creature adjacent to the main target. Need to remember that. Okay, but the doctor's out. Right, so back to the enemy, starting with the were-rat poker. Here we go. Five, poison bite. Makes a physical attack roll versus defense on adjacent rogue. Awful news. Two, plus two is four, so that is not successful because our cell sword has a defense of four. Lucky, lucky. Then the giant rat, six. That's the skitter scatter, isn't it? So it's going to be switching with a random ally. There we go. Then we're going to go on to uh, Lucinda here. It's going to do... Oh, at the start of our go, we should have... Uh, oh, at the start of our go, we will now move those down by one each. I forgot to do the bullshit roll. Nothing. And one. That's good. That was for the were-rat poker. So something bad is going to happen for the were-rat poker. And that is, that's right, wasn't it? I rolled a one. I did roll a one. No, I don't want to change now. Replace the were rat with a giant rat. Ha ha. And I'm assuming their health also changes to reflect that. So the health of a giant rat is three. Brill. Now Lucinda is going to attack. Hack and slash on the giant rat directly in front of her. 3 plus 1 is 4. Defense of 1 takes that giant rat out. Then our alchemist. This is the alchemist's standard attack. 3 plus nothing. Defense of 1. So 2 points of damage, taking it down to 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. Unfortunately, our archer cannot target because she can only attack targets 5 to 6 spaces away and the giant rat is 4 spaces away. Quick bullshit check. You, that's unfortunate. Okay, there is no god on the battlefield. Target random ally. Physical attack versus defense. Targeting Danny. Physical attack. Oh, one. Plus one is two. Defense of three. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Then the doctor's bullshit roll. Two, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. Alrighty. Didn't need to do a bullshit roll for the Doctor though, because the Doctor has legged it. Giant Rat does an attack. Three, that is, I can't remember. Toothy Boy, it is a standard attack versus an adjacent roll, physical versus defense. Three, minus one is two. There's not enough to do any damage. Quick bullshit check. Nope, that's fine. Then our cell sword is going to attack. Three plus one is four, enough to kill the rat. Done. Whoops, I knocked that. But actually, since we're over there, after a successful fight, we're going to be upping that to three. There we go. We reconvene with our doctor. At the start of that round, we should have ticked those down by one. So Lucinda can use her knife in boot attack again, and Rocco can uh, still can't use the patch. Let me patch that up action uh, for another round. Now we took out four rats there, which means 
we get another 20 gold coins, taking us up to 188. And that is that room done, isn't it? So we need to go into a new room. We're gonna, we got to backtrack. Now when you backtrack, you have to roll for wandering monsters, essentially. So when we go uh, for a start, we need to have taken our torch down. Who's carrying our torch? The doctor by t uh, a total of three, because we've been through three rooms. And I'm assuming we have to do the same when we backtrack as well. We're gonna backtrack into this room here. We're gonna roll for wandering monsters. If we roll a one, we encounter some beasties. No, we need to lower the torch by one. So that is one torch out. So rather than rub that out, I think I will just move over. Who's got the other torch? The alchemist. I need to draw a little torch tracker for the alchemist. So we need to go back into the main corridor, check for monsters, no monsters. We're gonna be using the torch. And then we're gonna go over, let's go over this way and have another room. Is 14. We've got a little crossroads here. And now we've got that drawn on, we can roll on the room contents table. Six. Okay, ah, that gives us a roll on the special table. So I think what we'll do is we'll check this out and then we will uh, call it a day. Um, I think I've already given a sense of how this supplement works. Let's roll on this. Now this looks like another D66 table, so we're gonna roll both dice. 45. There's all sorts of stuff here. 45, just one chance. You're not sure where the head is, but the rest of the human's body is right here. It wears a little human heart pendant on a silver chain around its neck. You can't help but think it's a lucky charm of some sort. Well, you hope it does better for you than it did for them. If a rogue who has this necklace in their inventory would die, they are instead reduced to one health. The necklace then fades out of existence. Cool. So I think I'm gonna give that to my alchemist. Fantastic. Should we have one more room? Let's have one more room. I'm just gonna note that down for the alchemist and then we will have one more room. And we need to reduce the torch by one and then we need to carry on. Um, uh, by the way, I didn't draw all three exits on here because one of them would have gone down to the edge of the page, so I just blocked that up. 14, that's the same again, let's have a different shape. 51, 51 gives us this little zigzaggy room. Let's find out what's in here on the room contents table. Four gives us a roll on the general loot. I feel like we're having more luck all of a sudden. Where is the general loot table? Here it is. When instructed to roll, roll 1d6, add the value of the escalation die. Ah, so monsters get more dangerous, loot gets more valuable. Two, three, four, five. An empty leather sack, this sucks. Okay, so we, we could have found some cool stuff, but we didn't. And if you roll on 18 plus, you roll a die and then roll on the corresponding boss loot table. So we have got three bosses down here. I guess we encounter those if we roll high on the enemy table. Anyway, and then you carry on for as long as you are willing to risk it. And then you have to make your way out. And that is essentially how neck deep sewers of rock bottom works. There's loads of other specials here, lots of uh, surprises to be found. And we didn't get any traps. There's a trap table in here. Yeah, so we've got uh, some cool looking traps in here. Don't know what that one is, look at that. And a lot more specials besides and other cool stuff. There we go, folks. That is my playthrough of Neck Deep Sewers of Rock Bottom. If you think that looks cool and you think Marching Order looks like a game for you, 
There will be a link, as I said, down in the description below to the Kickstarter campaign page, which at time of recording has just started. And if you want to see more, there will be a link up in the corner of the screen to my previous playthrough of Marching Order, in which you can see how a more traditional Marching Order game that isn't in the sewers goes. But yeah, if you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. Check the game out. It is a good one. I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now.